Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, we're gonna be recreating Mojack Money's hero section inside of Wix Studio. So if we check out the editor, this is basically what we're gonna be building in today's tutorial. It is actually really cool and actually not as difficult as you would think. I think it looks really cool and it would be a fun project to do here in Wix Studio. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for today's tutorial, we're actually gonna be starting in Figma. Now I'm sure if you use different design software, there's other options out there for you, but if you're gonna follow along with Figma, here are the steps to do so. Uh, the first thing I want to do is come down to the very bottom and press explore community. And what I wanna type in here is iPhone hand. And it would help if I spelt it right. And what I'm looking for here is something like this option here. We don't want something that's not straight up or down and tilted, something like this or this really wouldn't do. What we're gonna be looking for is something like this where the phone is perfectly up and down and straight and is not at some weird tilt. But we're gonna go ahead and click on this one and press open in Figma. Now I'm gonna switch to the mock-up page over here. And what I want to do is go ahead and start designing our hand here. So to not mess up this one, what I want to do is just use the option key or alt key on windows to kind of create a copy. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and lower this hand down a little bit. I don't feel like I care to see too much of the wrist in our effects that we're gonna be creating. So I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit like that. Perfect. The next thing I wanna do is actually grab the artboard and I want to press K to open up our scaling properties. And I wanna bring down the size quite a bit. I think what I'm looking for is maybe like 1025 by like 800. Something like that I think will look pretty good. And again, we'll just go ahead and bring the hand down a little bit. Um, for this design, we are gonna be using, you know, this kind of aesthetic in Wix Studio and using this website as, a, as an example. So it might be kind of nice if we set the background color to match this one right here. And so we're just gonna grab that hex code, grab this mock-up background color and set the hex code there. Awesome. It might also kind of look nice if we drag over one of these like uh, design elements, I guess. Like maybe these like circle things here would be kind of a, like a nice addition. So I'm gonna copy these over and I can even paste these in. Now, of course, we're gonna have to resize these quite a bit and make sure it's in the mock-up itself and behind the hand. And the last thing we'll do is maybe even set the opacity to like 5%, just so it's like a little nice accent, but not too distracting. But I think that looks pretty good. Uh, what I want to do is go ahead and rename this like 1025 by 800 and we'll say this one is the mock-up. And the last thing we need to do to this mock-up is actually with this background color or with this uh, background here, what I want to do, how we change that is we actually change it up here. So we're gonna grab this and we're gonna actually change this to a color and we'll just choose like a very bright green, something like this will do. And then to update this mock-up, what we're gonna do is grab the hand and over here under plugins, there's an option to update mock-up. We'll just click on that, press update. And within a couple seconds, we have now updated this mock-up. Now you might be saying like, hey, that's green. We don't wanna show green. Well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and grab this. We're gonna export this as a JPEG to keep the file small and then you can go ahead and press export and save it to your computer. Now this is where I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop just because it's a little bit easier here in Photoshop and a little bit more reliable. Um, but I will show you the Figma method in just a second. But if you can use Photoshop, I definitely would recommend doing so. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is your layer might be locked over here. So just make sure you unlock it. Then you're gonna grab the magic wand, select the green, and then in the bottom right, there's gonna be an option to mask it. Now, obviously we want to invert this. We don't wanna keep the green. We want to keep everything else but the green. So if we select the mask layer here and press Command I or Control I on Windows, then you will see it kind of flips the mask and gets rid of all the green. Then the only thing left to do here is go File, Export, Quick Export as a PNG. And the PNG will allow the background to stay translucent or transparent, sorry. 
But if you don't have Photoshop, this is what you're gonna to want to do. What you want to do is, since we exported this as a JPEG, what you're gonna to wanna to do is then go ahead and re-import this, the JPEG, not, don't use it on the actual Figma file with all the elements, just use the JPEG that you exported. You're gonna come down to Actions, go to Plugins, and you're gonna look up one called Chroma Key. With this plugin, what you can do is select the green color in your background. You can, instead of replacing it with a color, you can say make it transparent. And then under advanced settings, you can, if you are aware of what this is, I don't know what it is, so I don't really touch it. You can play around with it, but all you have to do is say replace color. And just like that, in a couple seconds, they removed the green, but the reason I don't like it is because it's not perfect, right? Um, that's the only reason I don't really like using it that much, and I prefer Photoshop. Um, but if this will do for you, then you can go ahead and press export as a PNG down here. But now that we have our phone mock-up ready to go, now let's go ahead and work on our screen. So what I want to do is actually go ahead and using the option key on Mac, alt on Windows, I'm gonna go ahead and drag out another copy of this. And what I want to do here is just simply like remove the background color and I just want to add the iPhone screen here. So what I want to do is actually come over here to our example and let's find a screen that we want to use. Let's go ahead and use this one. So I'm going to grab this frame and at the bottom, I'm going to export this as a JPEG. Then once we have that, all I'm going to do is head back over to our other tab and I'm going to drag in this image and I'm going to try to line it up the best I can. And using the K, I can resize it to make sure it fits perfectly. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is go ahead and bump this up to the top, okay? Then if I go ahead and grab the frame here in Figma and using the command key on my keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down as much as I can so I can show the entire screenshot of our thing, of our iPhone screen. But now what I want to do is go ahead and grab this screen right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it into this. And then I want to bring this one down to the very, very bottom. Okay. And then under the appearance tab over here, I'll just, just set that to 20. Because what we're going to do is we're just using this one as an example to make sure we can line up the bottom of this image to the bottom of the screen. Perfect. And then once we have that perfectly aligned, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and press command on the keyboard and select our artboard. And that's gonna select the whole thing for us. Perfect. And then again, while still holding command, I'm gonna drag the bottom of it up to where it snaps to the bottom of our iPhone screen image. Perfect. And then all I'm gonna do is just delete the iPhone image. And what that did is it's basically giving us um, the same amount of space that all the space we need at the bottom of this image that will match the bottom of this image over here. So that's all this image is doing and it's basically helping us with that. But now that we are done with this, let's go ahead and rename this one to, to 1025 screen. And now we can go ahead and export this screen right here. And now we are done creating assets. Let's go ahead and move on over to X Studio and actually get this built. So the first thing I want to do is of course, upload our media and under site files, you can see I've already done. So the first thing that I'm going to do it, which is kind of just the easiest, I'm just going to go ahead and add our iPhone screen to the section. And all I want to do with this one is lock the aspect ratio for now. And I want to set this to 1025. Okay. Just like that. Now, as you can see, our background color is not white. So I'm going to go ahead and set the background color here to match our, uh, our image background colors as well. Okay. And then I'm also just going to go ahead and set this to it be a fixed size. Okay. We're not going to want this to be responsive. Now I want to set the actual mock-up part of it. So what I want to do is go ahead and grab a container with this container. I'm going to turn on advanced settings. I'm also going to come down to advanced CSS grid and go ahead and apply that. And I want to make it a one by two. Okay. Perfect. I want to center this, send it to the top. And for this, I want to make this one 1,025 pixels. 
and width, just like that. And for the bottom one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this one temporarily to 800 pixels. And what I want to do inside of this is just go ahead and add our iPhone screen. Perfect. I'm, all I'm gonna do with this is center it, lock the aspect ratio and set this to be 100%. Now we literally made this container 1025 and we made this row 800. So this image should literally take up the entire thing. Now, as you can see, we're not seeing the iPhone screen behind it because this container still has um, some gray in it. So we're just gonna set the opacity to zero. And now you're starting to see the screen. However, one problem that we're currently facing right now is that the iPhone screen, we can kind of see underneath it, right? And we don't really want that. So what we need for this container to do is to take up 100% of our screen. So what I'm gonna do is with this top grid cell, I actually need to add a container inside of it, um, stretch it, we'll make sure it's in the top one. And then what we're gonna do is set the background color to this to our um, background color. Um, because as we scroll, we don't wanna see the iPhone screen up there either, okay? So now what I want to do is grab this container and we're gonna set this to auto, okay? However, you can see it made it shorter and that's not ideal, but what we're gonna do is come over here to the height and set this to 100 VH. And we're gonna go ahead and do that for all three of these, just to make sure the editor knows to be minimum and maximum 100 VH. And now you're gonna see that this made this top section, this made the bottom section a thousand pixels. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this to max content. And that's going to basically fix it. And now this top row is gonna take up as much space as it needs to ensure that this one is always gonna be at the bottom, which is what we want. Perfect. The last thing we need to do is go ahead and add top margin here to this image. Okay. So, because ideally we want the screenshot to start right here, but it's starting all the way up here. So we're going to come over here to top. We're going to dock it to the top and we're going to add, let's say like 280 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Mm, that's, might be a bit too much. So let's go ahead and lower that down. And I think 210 will do for now. And the last thing we need to do is we need to grab this container holding our mock-up and we need to come down here to position type. We need to set this to sticky. So now if we go ahead and preview the website, this is what we are going to see. And that looks really, really good. Now, if you wanna add some content above it, what you can do is I would add another section, you know, design it however you want, add whatever content you want. But let's say you have a stack just like this. Um, maybe what you could do is make it closer here to the bottom, I guess. Or you could just make this section pretty short something like this. Um, and then maybe this could be something like this might look good. You know, that kind of effect, just so like you have a little text or something above it. Um, but up to you guys on how you want to design it and change things around. Alternatively, what you could do is also with this stack, uh, you could actually set like negative 64 pixels to the margin, maybe even more, um, but just kind of make sure that this one is above everything else. So just right click, arrange, bring to front, you know, something like that. Uh, for some reason, that negative 64 pixels didn't do anything. So let's see like negative 128. It's so weird that's not doing anything. Oh, maybe it's because the section has height. There it is. Okay. So yeah, just make sure the section doesn't have height and then add negative margin to the stack. And then you can cre easily create something very, very nice like this. And then I'm not gonna go through every single breakpoint, but to kind of show you for tablet or mobile, 
you know, for the most part, it's already kind of set up in a nice way um, because we have it set to pixels, uh, to like a p set pixel value. However, for mobile, it might be a little too big. So, or actually, <laughs> you know what? That kind of looks nice. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I mean, the stack would need to be adjusted, obviously, but honestly, this phone part actually looks really nice. Uh, that was, when I was creating the sizing for this tutorial, that was a complete coincidence. Uh, but you can easily just change the sizings here. So you can, instead of this being 1028 or 10, ugh, instead of this being 1025 pixels, you can have it be like a smaller number. And it's, it's pretty easy to set up. But um, that's basically how you create this effect here in Wix Studio. But that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. But I'll see you all in the next one.